simplification by markets. And you will see that in the case of Roman crisis, you know. Let me uh, now turn to the other crisis. I was always amazed by the following. Greece is joining the euro after many difficult times because Goldman broke out products in order to remove from the balance sheet for public sector, many of the debt. So if I knew it, but brutally, you will see a total convergence of but inflation rates are still higher in, in Greece over the period, 4.1%, in Germany 1.3%. You still have discrepancy of, uh, of uh, inflation. Uh, the public management of Greece, the, the taxation system is not so efficient as the German one. Last but not least, in the treaty, the German imposed that no state could be rescued by the other one. And nevertheless, I was personally amazed to see this is the 10 year treasury bond interest rate, this is Germany, the good pupil, and this was Greece. As soon as Greece was admitted, the finance in Greece is equal to Germany. Well, I was like, these people are crazy because the ability to reimburse like Greece will never come back to the German one. And, and, so uh, when I blame the irrationality of, it's not a difficult polemic. If you look back the deficit of Greece, Greece never complied with the growth stability, the stability growth path. So they have been piling debt, but the no, financial market slept. Then you have a depression caused by the chaotic world. Poor Greece, they are castigated. Look what happened to them. Greek ah, are impossible. Skyrocketing differential. You see how crazy they are. The cause has been the world crisis. They did not uh, uh, understood the real means management of it, and we wake up, and they make self-fulfilling because with this price, you automatically create the bankruptcy of Greece. You understand the, the, this asymmetric power. And so they select the curve should have been a continuous rise of the interest, which is one. And they are sleeping all over the way, and put a wake up, which made the system bankrupt. So you understand? The, so I'm totally amazed that politicians think that market, financial markets are more efficient than public management. No, public management has a lot of defect, but at least you have. When you have conflicting representation, what is the future of Europe? In one word, will Mr. Draghi have more printing machine than the wealth of international financiers? Because for US and UK, the euro is over, cannot exist. No fiscal federalism, no political union, it's over, it should not exist. For a continent that has been so costly, we are dead. And therefore, what, what is the just stake? You have two conventions, and the winner is the one who will be able to capture the maximum of wealth. So you understand the conflict of representation. Right? It's not a question of, of rationality, of redesign of the system. It is a question of, you have very simple conflict of rationality. Where does the power of financing come from? Ten minutes. Okay. I will be nearly in time. Uh, I, when I was investing in finance, I was amazed. You, I was reading the Journal of Public of Finance. And the article of <coughs> commercial banking will vanish. Because everybody can issue bonds. For example, you don't, start, you don't go to the bank. You securitize, you flip your money. So why to go to the bank? So you add the forecast that commercial banks will vanish. The drama of the, the good thing of credit deprivation is that you have antagonism in the creditor of debt, but in the long run, the bank has interest, common interest of the good issue of the, of the and, and they are screening permanently, like lo looking at the info of cash flow of the firm. Whereas in capital market, you buy and sell. You don't care about the, uh, the viability. So the drama of securitization is that he has been totally removing the drone responsibility of the contract. In this case, I don't care about, I, I, I securitize, and then the poor buyers are free to buy, and there I don't care. And therefore, what, what, is the, what are the sources of finance? Total flexibility. You can buy a Greek treasury bond, or a German one, or a Swiss one. Second, I don't care about the future of, of Germany or Greece. I don't care. I want my money back. Third, uh, the Greek government is trying to play on a small cable taxation. The financier have a huge cable with many notes because they can invest anywhere in any of the assets, which has a huge imbalance between 
government have a limited set of instruments, and the financier will have an access to it. And last but not least, with financial liberalization and technical change, first, you optimize on the world level. If you don't have sufficient assets, you can create them. But derivative, gun. if you need more speculation, you need. Last but not least, uh, what, what is very important, you have at the speed of the light. The Greek government has to reconvene by night to decide the sterility. The financier, from one second to another, can decide the spread of the. So you have, you have a huge temporal asymmetry. The financier decides first, and the offer has to be high. And the, uh, many people uh, neglect this element. I strike in terms of category, this is their state and leader. I decide first, and you have to adjust whatever the consequences. And therefore, it is very important the following. Up to certain first, you have an unproductive allocation of capital. Finance is doing money out of money. A government is part of the king. They don't touch anything real, no? only fictitious capital. The drama is that in the long run, the wealth of Americans comes from productive capital. You have instantaneity, but imagine uh, you built a new car, you need a, a new software, you need to have a built-in inertia. Uh, and it's very difficult. We never invent uh, to invent a new medicine. Now take 14 years. You imagine it's not the time of speculation. Reversibility? No. Uh, if I invest in a false direction, I, I'm, I'm lost. I'm abusing. Whereas the capital, I sell my share. Last but not least, I'm a global rich. I'm, like, I'm localized. I cannot advertise on the world. I, I'm, I'm managing the Greek treasury fund. Uh, I don't care. I'm managing my portfolio at the world level. I don't care about it. Last but not least, I press competition, whereas opportunities uh, in production you need cooperation. And uh, if you remember here, yeah, John uh, yeah, uh, yesterday, uh, John Newton, what he was praising de facto the good capitalist, the German capitalist, in which you have cooperation. But cooperation needs sign. Cooperation is basically destroyed by this opportunity. <coughs> and I have many figures in Latin, or in the fast track. In Latin America, you have a huge recovery of profit, but no productive investment. You see, again, the point, because what you understand is risky. Uh, you have in Asia, and so therefore, you prefer absolutely the premium of absolute liquidity and rate of return. So that's that why I'm so pessimistic about the future of financial. Uh, I will go very quickly. Uh, imagine that you are living the individualist vision and that, in fact, society exists, the national state exists. In this context, you have a yin and yang of the polity and the economy. For example, when you have a money pressure, it's a political decision, the tax system, the school system. So really, you have polity and economy are embedded. They are not on one side, the economic thing. Uh, by the field set to roll up in the political <coughs> then they play, and therefore you have a permanent movement of dynamism ad adjustment. Okay. Uh, okay, so I will skip. Uh, <coughs> then, if you adopt this, you have a huge variety of capitalism, because everything is up to the domination of market, the national agency, the, the transposition of cooperation with the family at the level of corporation, Skeresu or Chebol, or uh, what I call in France, Maître Jacques of the state, uh, any problem is delegated to the state, or you have, it is delegated to uh, social partnership and social deliberation. So in a sense, you generate many forms of capital. And why democracy is important? Because usually in the American sense, democracy is about the political sphere. In social democratic country, the democracy go beyond, and you have the following, and I will give you an example. In US, democracy is important. <coughs> People elect, and it is a question of the political argument. Imagine that you have the Sweden uh, uh, 89 crisis. You have a crisis in the economy. It's fine. The state is entitled to intervene, <coughs> to go and watch the accounting system, to bankrupt the bank of Venezuela, because the state <coughs> is entitled to act in the sphere of economy. And therefore, what was the most efficient rescue plan of the banking crisis? It was the Swedish one. Because the recognition by public opinion by state can intervene the economy was uh, sparing all the despair of Obama, was being giving money uh, without any direct, direct control in the state of the economy. Let me go and. 
Uh, I will skip away the. Uh, I see, no, I, I, yes. No, but I, I don't have to present this diagram because I present since three uh, years and I nearly convinced nobody. Okay, I will try once more. Do you want to present the next financial crisis? You have only one thing to do to control financial innovation. Because if you have forbidden securitization, Trust me, you don't need surveillance ratio and so on. You, 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 you prevent the, expl the machine, the mass the destructive mechanism. So my argument should be, in the medical sphere, in the security of the place, security of course, of drugs, of food, you have an ex-control, an ex ante control of society. In finance, a guy in Goldman Street can invent a crazy product, sell all over the world. Well, let me give an example. You have uh, communi uh, uh, communist uh, mayors in the suburbs of Paris have been bought. That is, you imagine, uh, it's crazy. It should be forbidden by law. You should not buy poisonous food. So my argument should be, any new financial radical innovation should be authorized by the, the public order. And we should verify that if there are no externality, you are entitled to do it. If I have externality, I impose you a control to prevent that you will have to be bailed out by you. So yeah, it will be my preferred solution. The other one, uh, I will not detail. So I will say there are three other ones, much more realistic. But this one is the core. Let's control financial innovation. And trust me, you will prevent the next financial crisis. Let me conclude. And then I will say process in order. Then I was in detail uh, using a wonderful work by my colleague Bruno Amad. Uh, I, I imagine a stepwise uh, method in order to remove progressively the power of finance. Uh, Tobin tax, uh, political regulation, new rights of workers. So I, will, I imagine a sequential series in which you progressively expropriate the financiers without them being aware of. So, but okay, uh, I've got time to develop it. <laughs> because, uh, I, let me continue. Uh, first, you have an intellectual crisis. I hope to have convinced you because it's not simply that drug dog we are failed economists. No, no, we are closely linked. Uh, when I was hearing Mr. Henry Paulson, I realized that he did not understand do nothing but this guy. <gasps> this guy, the head of uh, for that, he was speaking for organizing the, all the alternative um, uh, uh, borders. You see, the people selling them had the information, the people buying, the market never opened. So, you see, I was in man does not understand the so, so really you have an interaction. Second, you should take uh, in general, financial market seems to be perfect, but the, the more imperfect. Third, uh, when you have radical uncertainty, it is totally false to imagine that financial markets are I read for Journal of Finance that during the bursting out of the internet bubble, you have been investing 3,000 billion of dollars of positive capital. So, so the idea that the financiers are allocating or quite well capital. In the 40th era, trust me, nobody has been wasting, even in France, with Concorde or anything. We never waste such a money. The financiers did waste, and both the people kept silent. Oh, what a deficiency. So it is totally false to delegate. And for real, real reasons, it's not because they are crook or they are greed or I don't even know. It's unrelated to this. First, uh, uh, what is uh, very surprising, you are uh, Procyclical credit, air bear view of rating agencies, uh, Enron crisis, uh, 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 Northern Rock. You have many, many examples. Uh, false or uh, but it was totally misinterpreted. So it is very interesting. You have many early examples. And for example, I've been writing papers back in 2000 saying the next crisis will be in the US. Uh, yeah, you're kidding, you have the best system. So all the signs are here. But they are not interpreted because we have the good theory and it cannot happen in my theory. Third, wh why the crisis is so severe? Because you are piling up all the false promises. Efficiency of deregulation. Third, euro has an incentive to reforms and innovation. Then you are you piling up and ch China a new mo model of capitalism, which is a, a, a very imperfect one. When you add them, up, you are living in a very dangerous period in which the system might finally crash. Six question: Why to explain the resilience of, of uh, uh, finance? First, 
because they, they have a huge asymmetry in expertise. They do the product, and in the treasury, they don't do the product. So I understand why controlling innovation should be so crucial, because you should legalize the expertise. And therefore, they continue to be flexible, universal, faster than life, opportunistic, and even cynical. The defense of Goldman and such, yes, we have been cheating, but I'll give you 300 million. So get silent. It is very impressive because you have the, per as, you, as Karen mentioned yesterday, the pervasiveness is such that two localized states cannot track control this kind of element. And for example, uh, I remember our study, Chuck, the people who bankrupt IG were rewarded by bonus because they have, they have put the mess and they have the, the only one to be able to cure the mess. So you understand the kind of asymmetry. Nobody can replace them because nobody has the expertise. And this gap in knowledge is quite important. Last but not least, uh, we should uh, have two things. Uh, put in the garbage bin half a century of economic theory, which is not nothing, you know, and many, many economic mm -hmm. theory, including the last of uh, last, last year. And of course, if the citizens don't wake up, financier will finally bankrupt. It is my conclusion. Thank you very much. Um, very exciting and we'll, a whirlwind tour. I'm sure there are many questions. We agreed to take them in threes. So if you could make a brief question uh, and, and then Bob will, will, will reply. I saw um, Carol first. Um, what well, about it was a bravura performance and an extraordinary creative attempt to bring the storytelling stuff by thrift and fraud and bring it into macroeconomics. Um, but my question, in a sense, is about the relation between the different elements, if conventions or stories are drivers. And put simply, as you yourself were saying, um, most stories are short-lived. The new economy story is five years. Many stories are contested, so that there's not one story, but competing stories. In that case, if things are like this in the story world, how can economic change be epochal? How can things be coherent? How can growth regimes last for 30 years? Isn't the world much kind of messier and more conjunctural than macroeconomics has traditionally thought about it? Question number one. Did Peter, did you have Yes, I, I just had a sort of, uh, w w one of the puzzles that I've had in my life is the connection between what we would we, we call the sort of real economy, you know, how uh, the business is done, and finance, you know, assets. And when I asked the central, you know, we had the bankers up here, and they would say, well, assets and liabilities, these sort of balance out, they don't seem to have a connection, you know, there isn't a quorum. And so, um, one thing you said, and I wonder whether this is the key to it, you, you talked about there being no need for money at the point of equilibrium. And we have all assumed, you know, that this is the, this is how economics works. We have, we get to an equilibrium. And is this the reason that there has not been any development of a proper accounting of finance as the intermediation of, over time? And the third question there? Hi, uh, Daniela Gabor from Bristol Business School. Speaking as a heterodox economist, I very much agree with your criticism of the American mainstream, but I think maybe we should be careful in kind of generalizing the mea culpa because I am, I think that we heterodox economists have also failed to provide a convincing theory of finance and a convincing theory of how financial intermediation changes. For instance, if I think about your question three, you are suggesting that financial markets, are, well, the theory that financial markets are better at allocating capital than banks is false, but we now know that actually banks no longer behave as in the traditional model, but they're very much involved in financial markets. So how can we, my question to you is, how can we move towards providing a better story of finance, a better theory of finance that recognizes these fundamental changes? Thank you. Okay. Uh, yes, I think no, the, the more I think, the more I think that the four D era was totally exceptional in the mm -hmm. because first you have the destructive character of the, the, the two world war, and then you have the hegemony of labor in the sense that, for example, when you eat Sloan, Sloan made compromise with uh, labor, 
It was totally exceptional in the American territory. And Michel Gaeta has been working over paper about the exceptionalism of the, of the, for this period, in which you had a lot of constructivism. After the Second War, even intellectuals in Howard are very convinced how to repeat, uh, how not to repeat the uh, mismatch of the internal system. So you have a constructivism. Breton who's emerged, we should say, you know, it was a very different period. You had a constructivism. Breton who's emerged, we should say, it was a very different phase from the phase now. Let the market play, play a role. So you had a, and you have, the miraculous compatibility of social reform provided after the war and the diffusion of, tech, of mass production from defense to consumer goods. So it was a kind of miraculous convergence. Now, what is very missing is that you have a huge division of labor and heterogeneity of interest. What is very impressive, uh, we, we have been searching for service led, competition led, finance led, innovation led regime, but all of them are part of the complex system. And by lack of political entrepreneurs, political innovation has been drastically lagging compared with organization. But what is very impressive, for example, when I was young, uh, a fiscalist in France invented tax of value added. So you have inventions from the public sector. Tell me the most recent invention in the public sector. It is very rare. The public sector is only reacting to the election of private sector. So I think uh, you are totally right, but then, if finance is leading, if you have uh, entrepreneurs like uh, Bill Gates competing, the system can You can have a Schumpeterian uh, capitalism. With finance, they push the system. Oh yes, maybe, okay, maybe it's time to give you my favorite. Oh, yes, yes, oh, yes, I will respond. This is cheating, this is cheating. Yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. You create fear, and at the very beginning, you have crisis, but the private sector is so glad. And even the public one can go to debt. Oh, you don't have your very art in the US. No recovery. Oh, my Lord, we should have austerity plan. Uh, oh, yes, why not? <gasps> the crisis is exacerbated. More default, <gasps> more public debt. We don't have funds to pay out. And my argument is the following. The snake is beating his own tail. So my argument is that <laughs> by fault of political intermediation, the financier will destroy the present system. And my favorite scenario is this one. Not because I'm pessimistic, because I'm craftiest, it's an analytical one. And I can prove for you that Mr. Draghi will not succeed because he will be back, blocked by the funds bank. He will be unable to, because he has less ammunition than the people. So, and I think this is, and after this period, what I feel is a drastic nationalism financial protectionism, and so I was totally amazed. I live in Germany, I cannot use my credit card. Because you have a de facto financial protectionism in Germany. So it could happen in the fact you have a refraction of financial system. It was, I do not admit in Germany financial products coming from the US. So you say you can, so, and in between the leadership might, might be nationalist movement. Second question. Um, no, I, I was, I was, uh, uh, nobody's perfect, I was a specialist of national accounting. And the nice thing in, in the French and the bad thing, you are Cartesian. So we have income distribution, profit, finance, and any um, general flow of funds, you have all the finance. And when I was designing a model for of finance, it was a truly integrated in the sense that the back bottom of the finance was playing a role in the integration. So we have always the tradition. But the equilibrium is simultaneously financial and real. Uh, but this was totally lost by the victory of this new system <coughs> of monetary policy. It was a devastating because we have highly integrated models in the fact that if you have over and then you stop investment. So it was, and, and it vanished. And with the model A minor theorem, for in my model, the balance sheet of firms play a role. And Mr. Manevo said, you have the red, you have the gagné, this does not play any role. So you have the victory of the classical theory that have been destroying this. Uh, no, the, the bad behavior of banks comes the fact that the German banks become universal banks. They play commercial banks and they play Goldman Sachs role. My argument should be uh, to separate totally commercial banks from inversion bank. Commercial banks have unlimited access to the liquidity of something. And uh, investment bank speculate with their own money. Uh, and this, this totally changed the evolution. So uh, last but not least, too severe, my neo keynesian friends have a fear of money. My friend 
uh, Andre Orea is working a very simple model uh, in which, uh, and I've been doing a very, very simple model in which I've been integrating the stock market and so on. So um, we are not uh, leading in the uh, lead, uh, formalizing of uh, financial market, but we can do better. Especially if we don't want to have optimality, if we want to recognize the, the true imperfection of the formation of stock market price. So it can be done. But uh, what would be interesting, instead of having post-Canadian regulation, instead of having writing a recipe paper, we should all unite our efforts to have a joint endeavor to understand the world. Because we are very few. More questions? At the back there? <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I just wanted to ask if you could uh, at least imagine um, a scenario in which that which you have depicted there on the on the PowerPoint uh, does not happen. Can you imagine a situation yes. where the snake does not end up fighting? Are, are we taking this in threes? Yeah. Three questions. Yeah, three, three, yes. Okay. Yes, I'll wait for three. Yeah. Uh, second question here. And a lot of running. <laughs> A third question. Uh, hello, Sargon Nissan from the Bretton Woods Project. Can I um, ask you to respond to something that isn't ostensibly about finance, but is about something you alluded to, uh, the extension of finance into virtually every other realm, and um, in particular to reflect on something which I've come across in the last couple of years is the debate within environmental economics triggered by the Stern Report, mm -hmm. and the specific aspect being can we value risk and return of assets, which is where they're referring to things like biodiversity or ecosystems, over hundreds of years or even millennia? Mm -hmm. And how your framework of the analytical basis of valuation where net present value has an almost negligible additional value after about 25 to 30 years under our existing system, how the debate that's occurred, which is highly mathematical and almost impossible to follow between Weissman, Stern, and others, um, reflects on these particular challenges, how finance has been successfully invading other realms. I just want to follow up on Klaus's question about the the scenario where the snake doesn't bite his own tail, and to bring in the issue of the central bank, which of course you know you highlighted wasn't uh, uh, an element in the macro models, but you know if we look at the LTCM and Enron, what we get in with LTCM is the first experiment of the central bank bailing out an entire market, which we get in full effect after the tech bubble. So when the central bank acts not to bail out just one fund or one set of investors, but will actually reduce interest rates to, to bail out an entire, uh, you know, the entire equity market basically to revive it. Then this becomes a new incarnation with banking and then insurance, so that it, you know, we, and now with quantitative easing in which uh, we have this uh, political actor that's supposed to be independent that constantly acts to bail out the entire market, not particular companies, not even just in the auto industry, but in an entire market, that this creates a much longer lasting... Uh... Yes, it is exactly my response to the first uh, question. I have a, uh, my recent paper is a scenario for Europe. And uh, you, you have a leading actor. Now the leading actor is the international uh, financial community. Uh, the only actor who has been in the summer acting is Mr. Draghi. He has been, I will create, and uh, yesterday, he has been, I'm ready to unlimited buying of short-term bonds. Of, so. Therefore, I think that the solution should be, uh, and why he has interest, because if the euro vanished, he's, he's losing his job. <laughs> the euro does not exist anymore. <laughs> you know, really, uh, no, really, because uh, when Sarkozy met Merkel, they don't care about euro, they care about the local constitution. Ah, I lost my job. So, you, uh, so it is important. <laughs> when he's defending, it is very strange. It is defending the common good of Europe, whereas none of the other head of state. So it is a good point. The drama is that you have political conflict, because then the Keynesian will have a can, exactly what you're mentioning for LTCM. Trust me, now I'm the lender of last resort, and I urge the government to make reform for me to comply with the infinite liquidity. But then you have to have political compromise. And the drama of Europe is that 
at the national level, it can be done. At the uh, supranational level, you have two conflicting visions of the uh, finance. Finance is a public good for Germany. Hyperinflation is a risk. And you have the pragmatic way, Keynesian way. Monetary policy is a tool for sustaining accumulation. So, so the happy scenario could exist, but the probability is very low. Why? Because in my feeling, you have, no, you have no, no, not the equivalent of Mr. Monet or Mr. Delors, not because they're French. Because they say, I'm not French, man. I defend Europe as such. Look around. It's not Mr. Barroso, but you say, I'm, I'm Europe, I'm defending. No, it's simply following the intergovernmental compromise. So what is missing in the scenario? That the most talented people should be the president of Europe. <laughs> uh, this is this missing? You cannot imagine a way after out of the world. Um, yes, I think this is very important because this mechanism is dreadful. Because in one century over, there's no hope. If the planet does not exist, in northern Atlantic, it does fail. And second element, it was like after the first world shock, you had the illusion of complete uh, substitutability of technical production. I remember a very crazy model by Nordhaus with a Cobb Douglas function. And with one liter for oil, you were able to, to manufacture all the goods of the world. <gasps> so the big drama has two things. The future does not come. Second, technical change will provide substability, which we don't care. We inventors will provide to rescue all the detriment. And this is ingrained in the US vision. Technical change with so, so and if you go to Germany or to Japan, maybe we can be destroyed by the next explosion of nuclear plants. So you, the, the people are ready to make compromise to stop the mechanism. In the US, innovation will provide. The market will tell me when I have to save energy. So I think it is a very dramatic problem. Because, and last but not least, uh, you have a total uncertainty about the model of climate change, for example. You have a dramatic uncertainty. And then normal choice. You have, I want to, so you, have, you have a normative approach. You cannot have national calculus. It's unable to solve. You, you, have, you have a decision. And last but not least, you have to select between regulation or market regulation. Regulation, I don't want cars with gas, with uh, waste, uh, or you, say, you, you, have, you have the administrative way and you have the market way. And given the development of state of uh, microeconomics, the market way will triumph everywhere. Let's, let's go the price, because it will be very important. Imagine in the US to uh, um, control price and so on. It cannot be done. So the market way, the normal way. And therefore, I'm very pessimistic for the ability of this kind of capitalism to overcome the challenge of uh, climate change. More questions? I'll, I'll use the chair's privilege to ask, ask a question about, uh, about terminology, vocabulary, it's the use of the term construction. Yeah. Uh, construction versus what, longer value, or some, or some, the, 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 some kind of di a division you're making here. And I am not, I am not a constructivist. I mean, I see, I, I see sort of problems in that notion. But if one were to use that vocabulary, one could argue that it's all about stuff being constructed or links being made, links being enacted of one kind or another within a kind of financial bubble on the one hand and into a sort of other things, into other worlds on, 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 on the other. So I'm just, I'm just slightly concerned <coughs> that the term construction, not that I particularly wish to defend it, gets sort of treated as a, as a, as a boo word. As if, and, and I'm confused. Only on the place of construction in Spain. So. I, I thought. Well, I, I mean, I read my uh, notes. I just looked at my notes again. I thought you. I thought. I thought. I, I, I thought you were worried. I, I thought you were worrying about the term. Um, uh, and I've misunderstood. It's I've misunderstood. Yes. No, 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 no. It's let's, let's, question. Uh, uh, I've misunderstood. That's fine. <laughs> there, no, no. there are. There are. <laughs> no, uh, I mean, in which what? it's the notion of. To, to say it more quickly, the notion of longer value or fundamental value, yeah. is that not in some sense also a construction? And the issue would be sort of how to, how to sort of s distinguish those um, in, in, a, in a way that didn't make it imply that finance is the only form of construction. Maybe the, the question's a bad one. There's two questions at the back, I'm being told. Okay, so, I, I so yeah. Go ahead. Hello. Uh, I'd like you to expound on the 
the notion and effects of protectionism. Uh, please. That's the first. There's another one there. Yeah, Why do you find the back question? Yeah, if I can just follow up on what you were saying about uh, value, because I, and I found that a bit tricky as well. Uh, you were talking about this difference between the fundamental value and the constructive value, which I found, again, quite problematic. We have this that we don't really have a theory of value, do we? I mean, apart from, from Marx's theory of labor value, we were never really, and, and therefore the, the right of an understanding that, uh, you know, finance is, is inherently speculative in that sense, and that it doesn't really create any value, because value can only be created in a productive sense, and, and, and values that are then established on, on the basis of markets are always speculative, they're always, so I'd like to push you as well on, on, on kind of clarifying a little bit what you mean and, and how do you, what, what is your theory of value, so to speak. And maybe related to that. I don't need. Oh, yeah. And maybe, maybe just related to that also, I mean, we heard from Can Nicholas. Can you quickly, please? Yeah, yeah, sorry. We heard from Nicholas as well yesterday that, you know, that the solution has to do with, with the abandoning this, this kind of transnational finance. And you're saying, again, we need to regulate financial innovation. It seems that there is a very radical, the solution has to be very radical in terms of, and I'm, I'm wondering whether that is not something which is not necessarily in the best interest of the Western Northern Hemisphere, which has benefited immensely from financial liberalization and innovation. It has helped us to overcome you know, the competition of the brick economies and so on. Okay, so imagine a world, and it was the case of the only Nobel Prize in France, Maurice Allais. You, you open the stock market only once a year. Then, everybody will compute what is the value of Facebook, given you said well. Imagine you open at any second. What, what is the evolution of price? So it will be the market price will lead the investor. So you understand, and you are totally right, in the, mon the world of liberal finance, fundamental value has no value anymore. And this is the drama, because you, you don't care about the, 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 So uh, my argument should be by re-regulation, you give again a premium to entrepreneurs who create value. Because it's the